my name is uh, Roman from Tornado Cash, and uh, I will talk about uh, privacy on Ethereum. Uh, our uh, agenda for today, uh, I will uh, do a brief comparison with uh, other solutions uh, that exist on different blockchains. Uh, then I will show you how Tornado Cash uh, works. In a, uh, I first explain and do, then do a live demo. Uh, tell you a few tips about uh, privacy and then uh, show a uh, trusted setup ceremony, how it works. Uh, first of all, uh, a few solutions that uh, already exist uh, on different networks. Uh, the most popular is uh, CoinJoin on uh, Bitcoin that is uh, mainly supported by Wasabi and Samurai wallets. Uh, it uh, usually looks like uh, a lot of people around 200 uh, do a transaction together and uh, it it's impossible to tell uh, which outputs correspond to which uh, inputs. So those like 200 people mix together and each transaction has separate, uh, we call it anonymity set, like a different a group of people that participate in it. Uh, there is also Mimble Wimble solution, uh, but it only hides the amounts and uh, it applies some techniques to um, hide the transaction graph, but um, mostly it is uh, pretty much uh, visible. Uh, then there is uh, Monero. Uh, it has pretty high transaction volume, uh, but uh, the, it hides both amounts and transaction graph, but hiding of transaction graph is pretty limited. But because all the transactions on this chain are private, it uh, provides a pretty good uh, security. Then there is uh, Zcash. It has the best technology to date, and uh, it allows to hide perfectly hide the transaction graph and amounts. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, currently uh, Zcash chain has only five percent of transactions fully shielded, and other ninety five percent are uh, transparent. So it's uh, public what amounts are and all the transaction graph. Uh, so for comparison, the cache uh, processes around uh, 300, I think, uh, private fully shielded transactions per day. Uh, Manera processes uh, more than 10,000. Uh, then there are Ethereum solutions. Uh, there is Aztec uh, that at the moment it hides only amounts of transactions. But in the future, uh, they want to develop a solution that hides uh, transaction graph too. And there is Tornado Cache that is pretty much opposite. We hide the transaction graph, so we break a link between deposit and withdrawal. But the amounts are fixed, so you can use Tornado Cache with amounts like one ETH, ten ETH, one hundred or point one. Uh, it works. Uh, like this. Um, you can imagine it uh, as a big bag, bag of coins and uh, some people come along and toss their coins into this bag and then uh, they come under new identities or maybe new people come and do a withdrawal. And uh, for the pool it's not possible to link deposits and withdrawals. Uh, and I need to mention that each amount like one Ethereum or 10 Ethereum has a separate anonymity set, so separate group, group of people that uh, mix together. Uh, now I will uh, show you how it works. So this is the main interface and there are uh, two main windows, deposit and withdrawal. First, let's do a deposit of 0.1 uh, ETH. Uh, this is the node. Uh, you can uh, think of it as a private key to your uh, deposit. Make sure to back it up. And uh, we just sign a transaction. And this is it. Uh, it is mining. Uh, let's do a withdrawal now, but we can withdraw a different node that I already had deposited earlier. Let's copy it and go to withdraw window. So I paste the node here 
And uh, ideally, uh, you want to do this in a separate browser and preferably like Tor browser or Tor window in Brave browser and probably use VPN. Uh, this is one of the reasons uh, we show this uh, IP address to you to make sure that you are aware that IP address is public. Okay, I have some uh, error here. Just a second, let's update, refresh the window. Okay, but this transaction is my, mine, but it doesn't have my note. Let's try again. Okay, now it works. This draw, it generates a snark proof. So it uses the note and proves that uh, you have a deposit in the system and it is not withdrawn yet, but you don't tell anyone which deposit it actually is. Let's confirm the transaction and uh, now it is sent to a relayer and relayer will submit it to Ethereum blockchain for you and uh, you can track the execution of this transaction on Etherscan. Now I want to uh, show you another tool that we released uh, today. Uh, it is a compliance tool. Um, so uh, a lot of uh, people asked us uh, about what happens if you uh, bring your funds from Tornado Cash to a centralized exchange, for example, and uh, what if uh, they uh, flag your funds as a high risk? So we developed this tool uh, that allows you to uh, show the link between your deposit and withdrawal to certain parties that you want. For example, if you want to pass some kind of KYC, uh, you can enter your node and uh, it generates uh, data about your deposit uh, and withdrawal, and you can generate a PDF report. And this is a uh, cryptographic proof uh, of the link between your deposit and withdrawal. So uh, we allow users a choice. Uh, so they want uh, they can choose who they want to share uh, this information with. Okay. Now, uh, a few small tips uh, about how to uh, stay more private uh, when using the Tornado Cache. Uh, first of all, uh, you need to um, think about how this will look like to outside observer. Like, for example, if there is an instance of Tornado Cache uh, that has like a few transactions per day, and then you come along and do a deposit and then a two minutes later, you do a withdrawal. For the external observer, it can be somewhat obvious that this is probably the same person. Especially uh, if you do a batch of deposits, like for example, you do eight deposits in a batch and then do like eight deposits in withdrawal. It is uh, pretty noticeable that it is very likely that it's the same person. So. Keep this in mind when using the Tornado Cache. Also keep in mind the network level security because Tornado Cache at the moment solves only on-chain parts, but you still need to uh, keep in mind that uh, you need to keep your IP address uh, hidden, like change uh, IP address every time you use the Tornado Cache and uh, make sure you use different cookies uh, with your different addresses so that uh, the apps uh, can't track you. And preferably you can use the different RPC so that Infura doesn't uh, uh, know that you are the same person. But uh, this is usually a trade-off between convenience and privacy. So uh, maybe uh, for you it's okay that in theory if Infura could log all the transactions and track you. Maybe for you it's uh, good enough and you don't need to care about this. Uh, now, uh, 
I will uh, tell you a little bit about uh, what uh, is next for Tornado Cash. The current uh, the current state uh, it solves the privacy, uh, but is not very convenient to use. So we have a few ideas how to make it much better. Uh, what we want to do is allow users to deposit any amounts and allow internal transactions within Tornado Pool. Uh, Tornado Pool so that um, you can deposit some amount and do a transfer uh, inside the Tornado without exiting anonymity pool. And this will allow for much more convenient integrations with uh, different wallets because it's much easier to understand how it works and much more straightforward. Um, under the hood, it will work like a usual UTXO model, very similar to uh, Zcash fully shielded transactions. So this can be uh, a privacy pool, very similar to how shielded Zcash transactions work with the rest of the Zcash uh, chain. Uh, now a few words about trusted setup. So the current implementations uh, implementation of SNARK require a procedure called uh, trusted setup, where uh, every uh, some users can generate uh, random parameters, and if at least one user uh, throws away this source uh, randomness that he used to generate these parameters it will not be possible to recover toxic waste and generate uh, a fake proof. So we launched a trusted setup ceremony uh, in the browser, and we have already more than a thousand contrib contributors. And if at least one of those thousand people uh, didn't save this private information and or not willing to share with all the others, like uh, if there is at least one honest user in this set, uh, it will not be possible to generate uh, fake proofs. There are two ways to contribute to this ceremony. Uh, one is the easy way in browser. You can choose to contribute anonymously or uh, with your Twitter or GitHub account. And there is also a way to contribute from console. Uh, it is more secure since you built everything from source code and uh, can be assured that nobody tampered with uh, binaries. But uh, let's do it an easy way uh, in browser. Let me uh, sign in with my Twitter account. And uh, Let me just uh, click the contribute button. Uh, this con contribution uh, is not really secret because I enter the uh, my uh, random input publicly and other people can see it. Although the browser will also add its internal randomness to the string. I click contribute and uh, it usually takes about uh, one minute. And after contribution uh, is complete, it will uh, ask me to post uh, my attestation to Twitter. So I can publicly confirm that I made this uh, contribution and this, is, this was really me. Uh, yeah. Uh, while we are uh, waiting, uh, let me check if there are any questions or on YouTube, uh, no, it's fine. Okay, uh, it will verify uh, in around 30 seconds uh, and I will uh, post my uh, attestation. Uh, I have uh, around uh, three minutes left, so uh, we are almost finished. Yeah. Um, I can, uh, while we do this, uh, I can talk uh, a little bit more about uh, maybe uh, give uh, a few more tips about privacy. So uh, there are also a few considerations, for example, your time zone. If you do uh, withdrawal, uh, it always 
at the waking hours of your time zone, it could be possible to guess uh, where in the world approximately you are located. But uh, this applies only if you use uh, Tornado Cache really, really often. Uh, yeah, uh, let's let us check. Okay, it's still going. Okay, uh, it should be complete soon, but uh, this is uh, pretty much it for this uh, presentation. Okay. Oh, while I did the contribution, uh, this uh, what uh, sometimes can happen. Uh, we use optimistic uh, queue so that uh, we don't uh, reserve time slots for people to contribute. And you can think about uh, this contribution as a contributions as a blockchain. So each participant downloads the last contribution, adds their own randomness to it, and then uploads the new contribution back. So uh, if uh, so happens that two people do the contribution at the same time, one of the participants will uh, uh, produce an outdated contribution. Uh, you can think of it as an uncle blocks in the blockchain. So what happens is that this uh, participant will need to uh, redo his contribution, download the last contribution again, and uh, repeat this uh, contribution procedure and upload. This allows to much more convenient uh, user experience. So uh, users don't need to come at reserved time slots, but sometimes uh, these collisions uh, can happen and uh, our uh, browser code automatically will retry to upload your contribution again. Uh, it will retry a few times uh, and uh, yeah, this is completed and will uh, give up after I think three times, uh, it, in which case you can just repeat the process. So let me post my attestation that I made this uh, contribution to Tornado Cash Ceremony. Let's tweet it. Okay. And let's see in my uh, profile. This is how it uh, looks like. OK, uh, this is uh, all for me. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, and goodbye.